Hi everyone. Today we will, we will be talking about sandboxes. A sandbox is a special table that starts with the sandbox action. Uh, sandboxes are intended for uh, one-time temporary calculations that you may need for uh, different uh, purposes, like uh, investigating a data quality issue or when you need to answer a question or maybe you just want to test a hypothesis and perform a few temporary calculations. To create a sandbox, right-click an action that produces the output that we are interested in and uh, select send output to sandbox or model. In this case, we need a sandbox. So let's create a new sandbox like that. So here we go. Now we have a new table and it starts with a sandbox, sandbox action. So the sandbox action, it's a special action. Uh, it doesn't have uh, any properties, but you see several buttons in the sidebar and we'll, we'll get back to them a bit, a bit later. So how can you use uh, sandboxes? Well, it's a regular table, so you can apply any actions that, that you think are necessary. For instance, we want to test a hypothesis and we want to see if the number of companies in, in let's say, Texas are greater than 50. Uh, so what we are going to apply a filter, so keep only Texas, and then we, we, we want to aggregate and uh, calculate the number of companies. So again, we right click and aggregate and count. And then, uh, okay, we don't need this aggregation by company. Here we go. So we see that the number of companies is 220, which is above 50. So this is one example how you can use sandboxes. It is convenient to create sandboxes using keyboard shortcuts. And in this case, instead of right-clicking and selecting this command from the list, uh, you can just press Ctrl B and that would create a sandbox in the same tab. Or you can press Shift Ctrl B, B for sandbox. And this would create a new tab and uh, the sandbox will be placed uh, in this new tab. Uh, calculations in sandboxes are temporary, which means that whenever we uh, design calculations, uh, the actions remain, but data will not be saved in the sandbox when you exit the application. Uh, for instance, if we, if, I, if we will save this project, and uh, we will start a new project, and then we will open the previous project that we just had. You can see that the sandbox is now empty. That's because sandboxes are intended for, for temporary calculations. Now let's look at the sidebar and see what buttons do we have here. So when a sandbox is empty, there is a number of ways how you can populate it. Send output of any action into, into sandbox. For instance, if you select this action, and right click and send, send, output, uh, send output to sandbox. You see now we have uh, the sandbox in, in our list of sandboxes available here. So we don't have to create a new sandbox every time. We can send some data set into an existing sandbox like that. Okay, let's go see that. Okay, here we go. Now we have this, uh, this list here. Um, or maybe if you go to this section and right click it now and say send output again to, to our sandbox. Let's go and see. Okay, now we have a different table here. Uh, other options are, uh, we can simply simply paste data. Uh, for instance, if you have an Excel spreadsheet like that. Now if you cop copy this data set and go to EasyMorph and paste data, we can immediately uh, see that uh, the output uh, has been updated and we see this table from Excel in, in EasyMorph. It is convenient uh, in cases, uh, for instance, when you have an Excel spreadsheet and you want, again, you want to test a hypothesis or maybe you want to perform some calculation, but you don't want to use Excel for that. Well, sometimes Excel is not the best tool for the job. And instead you can simply copy, copy a data set or a subset of it 
and paste it in uh, in a sandbox in Isomorph, and do calculations uh, and uh, transformations here using uh, the sandbox action. Another option, you can simply import data into the sandbox from from any dset uh, file. Okay, for instance, we select some action, and here we go. Now we have now we have uh, another data set in in the sandbox. Another interesting feature of uh, sandboxes is that they uh, skip actions automatically if the sandbox has no data. Let's create an action that would remove uh, companies with uh, no information about workers. So I got a filter, remove empty values like that. Okay, and maybe let's remove the revenue per worker column as well, and this column as well. So we have a few actions here. Let's see what happens if we save this project and reopen it again. So we save it. Now we uh, let's create a new project just to make sure that the previous project is gone. And let's reopen it. So you see now uh, the sandbox has no actions and all the, uh, sorry, has no data and all the actions are skipped in the sandbox. This is convenient because if, when, uh, when you open application, sandboxes uh, have no data, so these actions won't produce any errors because they will be automatically skip, skipped. So let, now let's see what happens if we populate this sandbox with a, with a data set like that. And here we go. Now these actions are automatically calculated. An interesting feature of sandboxes is the ability to, to do re-sandboxing. So what is re-sandboxing? For instance, you calculated, uh, you applied a few actions, so you produced a result. Now you want to continue from this point on. So maybe you don't need previous calculations. You just want to, uh, to make it the new starting point for your sandboxes. Basically, so you want your sandbox to keep only this data set. Uh, for that, you right click an action and select re sandbox here. So let's do that. So when I press that, here we go. So what happened? Uh, the actions before the clicked action were removed, and now we only have uh, only have the output of the action that we clicked. As the uh, as the contents of the sandbox, if we had any actions after uh, the action we clicked, they would still uh, remain here. We just didn't have them, uh, but all the previous actions are removed. So we we like squeezed uh, our uh, transformation chain, and now we kept only only the result uh, that we are interested in. So what else ca can you do with the sandbox? There are uh, many use cases where they can be uh, helpful. For instance, um, you want to check for changes after you apply uh, a, a change or a, you, you make changes in your, in your um, workflow. Uh, let's say we have this, okay, let's remove this. Well, so we have this table and uh, now we want to make some changes uh, in, in our chain of transformations. And then we want to then we want to see if if it affected the output. So we want we want to to be sure that what we've done it's either affected or didn't affect um, the, the result of calculations. So what uh, in this case we are we are going to create a sandbox. It's like a snapshot, like a photograph of the uh, of the output of the last action here. Uh, I will click and select it and say new sandbox. Here we go. So now we have new sandbox. Uh, and let's say uh, let's go and change something here. I don't know, maybe we are going to change and maybe we will remove um, one line here. Maybe we will remove one state. Okay, we'll enable the section and we'll remove one state like that. Okay, it's obvious that uh, that only care for is there. So, okay, let's change it here like that. So now all the states are present here except California. But the previous, the previous output of this table, the previous uh, state of this table, uh, 
remains in the sandbox. So every time you rerun your calculations, so you can press reload and run, or you can make uh, any changes here, the sandbox is detached from your workflow. So all data that remains in the sandbox is intact. And, uh, and that's why we now can uh, compare and try to detect any changes. For that, we will use the compare table, tables actions, compare tables action, and export, like that. And we can immediately see that the output of table export is not exactly uh, what we have in the sample, so it, it differs. Well, of course, we know that, um, but now we can see a confirmation for, uh, for that. Okay, let's uh, disable this section, see what happens. And here we go. Now, when we disabled the section, uh, the output of this table, the output of the last section in this table is restored, and we see that the compare tables action returns returns no discrepancies, so the result is empty. This is how we can check outputs for changes. Another uh, use cases for sandboxes is, for instance, when you perform different calculations for research and data, and then you want to do something with a subset of data. For instance, you explore uh, or analyze your data set uh, and let's say you analyze transactions and then certain transactions in your opinion look suspicious and you want to send uh, the, this list of transactions to some, someone else. Maybe you don't do this every time, but sometimes you want to do that. So in this case, uh, again, you can have a sandbox. You can have a sandbox and since the sandbox um, it's a regular table, so you can derive another table from it. It would just make sense it just makes sense uh, to make sure that this table is not calculated when the sandbox is empty. Make it uh, derived on condition. So um, skip uh, only only calculate actions and if the source table is not empty like that. So when it's empty, uh, this one is skipped too. Uh, and here you can add action. Let's say export into into a data set. The same sandbox, export it, and now we um, okay, paper supply, and now we add action, send uh, send email, and we send it to uh, we send it to somewhere, like some other recipient, and we attach this file. Okay, let's say some, someone at corp.com, like that. Oh, subject is required. Uh, check this out. Now when I, uh, when I work with data, I can do some research, I can do, okay, let's maybe I want to enable this section here, and maybe I want to um, cut, uh, trim table, and so I want to trim tables below this row, so to limit our, 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 uh, our data set, and then, and then the result, uh, I send the result into the, uh, into the sandbox, like that, or I could do all the transformations, uh, I could do them here. That's uh, that's that's also possible, and that's another option. And uh, now I I just uh, write uh, select the section. If I press run action, then it will send it will uh, send the contents of the sandbox to to the person who has specified here. If uh, the sandbox is empty, again let's save this project, and uh, I'm I'm going to reopen it. If the sandbox is empty, then these sections are, are skipped too, so nothing is sent. 
So now I can do I can do investigations. I can um, I can maybe calculate something, or maybe I can filter data, or I can analyze it in, in some way, and uh, um, then whatever result I get, um, it can be in, in sandbox. Uh, uh, can be sent to the sandbox, and then I can send it by email, like that. Finally, one more case where sandboxes can be convenient is um, injecting injecting um, data sets. Let's see how it works. Uh, for instance, uh, in this workflow, okay, let's I have this I have this data set uh, as a lookup table, but uh, I want to experiment what what will happen if I supply another another um, another data set? So if I inject, so instead of merging with this uh, uh, with this table, um, I would merge some some other table. What would happen? So let's uh, let's play with this. I'm going to uh, create new sandbox here. I create new sandbox here and. Uh, Let's say I want to make all um, all states uppercase. So for data, uh, sorry, modify and make it uppercase like that. Now uh, I want to inject inject this data set at the end of this table. Uh, for that, I'm going to use the either table action that and either table I will use sandbox to and notice that there are two modes in the either table action which says use this table if it's not empty otherwise use the other table or use the other table if it's not empty otherwise use the, we need the second mode here so what happens now let's uh, let's look at, uh, at uh, what happens with our workflow. Now you can see that either table it uh, it replaced it substituted the current the current da data set uh, in this table with with a data set from the sandbox. So I injected the data set of the sandbox into my current workflow and let's see the output here we go we can see that uh, the the state long is now uppercase and also everywhere okay let's see what happens if we save this project and reopen it when sandbox will be empty I stay okay I reopen the project and here we go so you see now the sandbox skips uh, has no data so it skips uh, all the uh, actions here and because it has no data well it's out it is empty then the either table does not inject its content uh, contents into into our workflow and we keep using the original uh, data set that comes uh, from from a text file so everything you see all the states are in lowercase uh, so you can you can insert uh, combinations like that sandbox plus uh, either table. You can insert it in different parts of your workflow if you want to test um, how your workflow will behave. Let's say with a test data sets or with some sample data or maybe with incorrect data just to make sure that your workflow handles uh, data quality issues and or bad or bad data. Uh, so this is a good example how you can use uh, the sandbox action. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you.